I know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. Like, energy, like good scene. That place was rocking anyone up there. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Bug fans were there, too. Uh, Eat the Bug. Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron Show of WDAE. Uh, Pat Donovan. And it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Going to put him on mute for a second until that gets a little clear. But we're joined by Pat It looks Donovan. like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something over there. <laughs> it does look like we got a little... No, nah, my, my uh, camera's broke. Howdy ho, howdy hey, how the hell are you guys? It's a great Wednesday here on the Bucketeers. Beautiful Wednesday. Well, actually not really. It's a wet swamp pretty much all over the Midwest, the East Coast, wherever the hell you might be. Nonetheless, we're here to talk Bucks ball, NFL football, all sorts of football. Very special guest tonight as well as we start our much hyped mock draft month-long coverage where we're going to get guests from other podcasts other fans of other teams former players of other teams are going to join the program throughout the month of april and help us compile the 2024 nfl draft and of course it starts with pick one which is the chicago bears and about seven o'clock eastern here in about 20 minutes at the top of the hour we're going to be joined by a very special guest, Juice, Kyle Machowski, the Juice Man from the ONTAP Sports Podcast Network. They're affiliated with Sports Illustrated. Juice is a great friend of the shows, has joined the show before, so very excited to have him back talking Bucks, Bears, NFL Draft, so much more. Going to have to mute your hunch, your echo in. Without further ado, J-Lo, welcome in. I saw you were at the Rays game earlier today, brother. That seemed like a fun time despite the loss. Jose Caballero almost tied that puppy up in the ninth. Yeah, it was a close one, man. It was tough. But it is what it is. You know, I enjoy baseball. I took my oldest daughter to the game when my brother went. So, always nice, man. It keep me occupied till the NFL draft and football season. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, and how's the trop doing? I know uh, Ray J was as beautiful as ever as I was there last season multiple times, and that's always well kept to me, Ray J. How, how's the trop going in terms of cleanliness, wellness? You see any bucks floating around? I know Rashad White was there last year, as was Kalaja Kansi. Um, any sort of that this year to this point? No, it was kind of quiet on that side, but I did say that's too a person who was visiting from New York. He was a Mets fan. And we chit-chatted, chopped it up a little bit and stuff, you know, had a good time. So it's always nice to meet other fans of a baseball team visiting another trop, you know, to my bucket list come, you know, later this month when I go to Chicago. You know, one of those people I had to go to other parts and see what they're like, on my opinion. We got to take that, take that. Our man Neil L's in the house, and whenever Neil – makes an appearance you know you got to echo the memento like subscribe turn that notification bell on on our youtube channel so anytime the bucketeers go live whether it's me j-lo gene huncho whoever it might be you're in tune greg norman depth piece right uh you know randy gregory we actually have to talk about today and we're going to be talking about that today huncho um, well, it looks like we just lost Huncho. We'll see if he'll be back in a sec. But um, we also have a signing to talk about today, and that's Randy Gregory. We're going to get into that in a little bit here as well. I think he meant Randy Gregory. He said Greg Norm and Richard did, so uh, not too sure about that. Christopher Cole, one-year prove-it deal. Yep, that's what it is on Randy Gregory. So, uh, J-Lo, we might as well talk about that now. Greg Norman, I'm not sure how you confuse those names, but, um, you know, he was a famous golf person, Greg Norman. He was a golf guy. I'm assuming he's talking about Randard Gregory, Randy Gregory, but uh, J-Lo, thoughts on the Randy Gregory signing? I like it a lot. At one point, 
He was on the up and up to becoming, you know, a better pass rusher in this league. Still a very good rotational pass rusher at 31 years old. A fellow Nebraskan Cornhusker, Jason Light, loves him some Cornhuskers. Obviously bringing in Endomic and Sue, drafting Kenny Bell back in the day, drafting Trey Palmer, Levante Davids around. Now you bring in former Cornhusker Randy Gregory. He's been on the 49ers, Broncos, Cowboys, 22 career sacks, 10 career force fumbles. I like the move a lot for veteran depth piece J-Lo. Six and a half sacks is his career high, but sack numbers don't do him justice in terms of his potential at rushing the quarterback. What say you on Randy Gregory? And it seems like the Bucks needed a move like this, as Richard says, leaving work long as day. We don't blame you, Rich. We're just trying to get our story straight. But J-Lo, it seemed like the only position the Bucks haven't attacked yet for depth was the edge position. You know, we signed a couple of O-line guys, a couple of D-backs. What say you on this move? I'm a fan, and it doesn't limit us from drafting a pass rusher edge yet either. No, not at all. You can never have enough edge rushers, as far as that goes, as depth. Randy Gregory has shown some flashes in the past, getting out to the quarterback, getting at, you know, creating pressure and sats and all that stuff. And you can't leave out the coach, Greg Edwards, who coached him in Dallas. Good call. That, that, and that also benefits him coming here, familiarity, continuity. So hats off. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be a 19 sack guy like Chad Barrick was years ago, but I expect you know great depth between him, Anthony Nelson, guiding young guys as in Yana Diaby, Jose Ramirez, and also and Watts as well. I mean, you can't you you can never say no to enough depth as pass rushers. You know, and I I think we're going to put him in. You know, a position to succeed, j like you're saying, we have a lot of good young pieces on that front seven. Vita Vea, obviously, Greg Gaines, Kalijah Kansi, you know, Yaya Diaby. He's going to get his chances to get some holes and pass rushing gaps and get after the quarterback. Huncho, are you there? And if so, brother, welcome in. And do you agree with j and myself that this signing seems like a really good one for rotational edge depth for veterans? Yeah, I'm here. I'm it's here. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm here, but I'm um. Oh, sorry. I'm um. Uh, I'm excited about the um addition, and I also want to see what he's gonna do because I haven't seen too much. But last year, I think he had a pretty good year, so we're gonna see what he's gonna do. I still would uh go edge in the first round. Yeah, we'll see if we go Chop Robinson or who we may go in round one. You still have the whole tools at your disposal. It sounds like Huncho's having a fun adventure as we welcome in Brother Huncho to the program. But again, for those just joining us, 15 minutes away from special guest Juice from the ONTAP Sports Network to kick off our Bucketeers month-long mock where every show this month we're going to be making anywhere from one to four draft picks on the show some will be dedicated to all draft picks some will be bucks talk and draft picks but we got both to do today and talking randy gregory speaking of newcomers we have a lot of newcomers and that means new numbers get announced and come to the table with newcomers we'll see what number randy gregory is will he wear uh, you know, he wore number five with the 49ers. We'll see if he's able to get that somehow. I doubt it, but we'll see if he makes it happen. Other new numbers for the Bucks: Jordan Whitehead is number three. So this will already be his third jersey number with the Bucks, I believe. His fourth jersey in the NFL. Bryce Hall is 21. Tavier Thomas is 37. Ben Bredesen is 68. Lawal Uguak is 75. Sua Opeta, 76, and Eric Banks, 93. Obviously, the most notable there, Jordan Whitehead being number three. JLo, anyone stand out on that list with their numbers to you, my friend? And at the end of the day, where do you see Randy Gregory landing on the new number list? I know that's kind of hard to decipher, but not a lot of numbers to play with. Uh, you think he tries to trade for a number, or you think he settles for one? Um, Randy Gregory, I think, would we'll probably go back in the 90s. It just depends. Because um, number five is, um, Jay Car- I believe, our opponent, Jake Carbardo. Yep. So, 
if he really wants that number that bad, he can offer, you know, some kind of, you know, whatever it takes to get it. But I see him back in the 90s, as far as that goes. And, of course, Jordan Whitehead, I mean, number three. The fact that he's back and wearing number three, no matter if he's wearing 40, 90, whatever, just seeing him back in that lineup is going to be phenomenal. So you can give me Jordan Whitehead on that one. Yeah, and Elgato813 says, do the Bucks make trade moves and draft? I could definitely see them trading back, as Jason Light usually does. One time, traded up, and we did land Tristan Wirfs, although that was only a pick or two. But yeah, I could definitely see Jason Light trading back to that 29 to 35-ish range, and whether it's at the end of day one, which I hope it is, because nothing's worse. I mean... Don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, it betters a franchise, accumulate picks, move back, et cetera. But from a fan's perspective, nothing worse than sticking around all day, sticking around all night. Next thing you know, the Bucks trade back. They're not even in day one anymore. But what can you do? And uh, we'll see what happens. But the Randy Gregory signing definitely allows the Bucks more, uh, you know, room to move up, move down, move all around. Huncho. Uh, thoughts on Jordan Whitehead wearing number three, or did any other of the new Bucks new numbers stand out to you? I mean, yeah, I think he was going to do the number three uh, coming back from with the Jets. I mean, I like it. I like how he balled out. Hopefully he get three interceptions a game like he did over there with the Jets also. And, um, yeah, I didn't really get a chance to look at the other numbers, but I think three for Jordan Whitehead, he's coming back. And um, I'm ready to excite it to see what he's going to do. Yeah, I think he'll be very legit this year. I'm excited that Whitehead's back in the fold, much like I'm excited Huncho, J-Lo, and myself are back in the fold here on the Bucketeers. Speaking of the Bucketeers, you guys could catch us Saturday as well. We'll be back Saturday morning bringing you a couple more mock draft picks, at least the Commanders and Patriots. We'll see if we expand beyond that point, but we'll get you guys the Commandos picks and the Patriots picks, and how our month-long mock is going to work. It's going to be a legit one. Whoever Juice takes for the Bears tonight at that first overall pick, who knows, wink, wink, we probably have a good idea, but they'll be off the board, meaning whoever makes the second pick for the Commandos can't take whoever Juice chooses tonight. We're going to keep track. We're going to tweet about it. It'll be a lot of fun here for the month of April as we inch closer to the draft and also keep in mind we do come at you live day three of the draft for our day three draft special coverage our annual tradition me and JLo will be coming to you live from chicago having a fun draft show going on here speaking of fun JLo, ufl was a little bit of fun this weekend we talked about it a little bit on easter sunday when we did our easter special with the bucketeers this past sunday that was a lot of fun for those that missed it and are a big fan of just talking ball or having some Easter fun, holiday fun, go out and check it out on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google, or more. Bucketeers Easter special. But J-Lo, now that the whole weekend is coming on for the UFL, anything stick out to you different from previous years of the USFL or the AAF or the XFL? And do you think that this league is going to continue to gain momentum like it has in this short period of time thus far? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think they, they had pretty good viewers. I like how the, some of the games went. They were close, not really blowouts, which you want to see the football fan, in my opinion. You want to see those close games coming out of the final wire. And, you know, I like what Dwayne Johnson's doing and everybody's supporting him around him, trying to give other players opportunities to get back in the NFL, stay in shape. I mean, there's just so many opportunities. And for the NFL to step in and take the kickoff rule, you know, as a, you know, watch out for the XFL, you know, that tells me that the UFL is doing something right. And I see more seasons coming, you know, coming in the future for them as well. And like I said, Dwayne Johnson is a successful man. I feel like he's getting enough fans into this to where I don't see them shutting down anytime soon. God forbid. Yeah, I agree with that. We'll see what ends up happening. Cleveland B says, what up, Bucks from the Cody Cribe? All right. Uh, you know, my soul ready for the Bucks show. 
I didn't know Corey Hayes kidnapped the Cleve and Me podcast. It seems like, no, I'm kidding. Uh, we'll see. But welcome in, Cleve and Me, as we're waiting. Uh, the great juice. He should be joining us in about eight minutes or so to make that Bears pick. If you guys missed it as well, Bucks didn't make a splash today, bringing in veteran defensive end edge rusher Randy Gregory to a one year deal. I'm guessing it'll be a prove it deal, cheaper type numbers with incentives built in. But yeah, JLo, I thought the UFL was fun. I thought it held its own this weekend. I think it gives people to, you know, the alternative to other sports. If they're really big football heads, you always have football and even just bars that'll give the chance to fill their TVs with stuff, you know, especially in the dog days here when NHL and NBA start playoffs and sports aren't on all the time besides baseball, it'll give you the chance to watch some UFL. And they have a lot of good headline storylines like Destroyer being in the league, other NFL Xers being around the league. So, uh, you know, guys from other countries getting a chance to play. Really interesting pool of people in the UFL. Richard says, well, we got Cleveland, me money on the free agency move. I don't think it's announced yet. I think it's just been announced that it's a one-year deal. I don't think they've announced the money part of the deal yet for Randy Gregory and the Bucks. But if we do hear anything on this show, we will be sure to let the world know right away. But seems like a cheapy one-year prove-it type deal. Richard says, outside the obvious needs, what position should the Bucks draft if the top edge rushers and interior offense alignment prospects are gone? Cornerback, move back. Huncho will ask you that. Uh, just say all the edges are gone, interior O-line's gone. What do you see the Bucks doing? I'm gonna go with Edge. I'm still, I'm still thinking we need Edge because I think the signing for Randy Gregory was really a death piece. So I think Edge is very vital because rushing a quarterback, you know, is get him off the mark so he don't make his connections and and don't drive down the field. It's a pass league, so you got to get pressure on the uh, quarterback. And I think that's where you start at with the Edge rushers. And um, we got Kalaja Kansi and Vita Vea coming up the middle. And um, I think Todd. He, he's, he's a defensive guy, so I definitely believe we're going to go defense, and I, I don't see no other better place really to go besides edge right now. Yeah, edge, um, I think I even if all the top edges are gone, I'd probably trade back and maybe take an edge because even after I the agree. Randy, even after the Gregory signing, it's a great depth piece. And, yeah, I mean, if we catch lightning in a bottle, he could be more than depth, and surely he could contribute – don't get me wrong, but odds are he won't be the number one edge rusher exactly. on the team. If he is, kudos to Light for striking gold twice with the Shaq Barrett than right. Randy Gregory signing. And again, that's not taking anything away from Randy. He's 31 at this point. Um, he's had a great, uh, a very good career of being a rotational edge piece, a good tackler. So nothing against him, but you know, if you're asking any newbie. 31 year old to be the number one guy i mean look at von miller in buffalo he really never uh filled his shoes or his payday over there j-lo what are your thoughts on all of that no i mean randy gregory is just a rotational piece he might surprise us maybe get double digit stats will be helpful for our team in general like i told you like i mentioned before I don't see him getting 19 sats at Barrett Day a few years ago. By seeing him being a rotational guy, a guy that can go in there with experience and plus familiarity with a pass rushing, a, a, a pass rushing coach and George Edwards, who's worked with him, and like Hunter, pick up after Hunter said, you know, it doesn't t- it doesn't take away we may take an edge in the first round, and I'm okay with. A child Robinson, who's looking like he's going to be the only one left at 26, but we can trade down and get a couple more pits because Buffalo just traded away Stephon Diggs, so now they need a number one receiver. And there's going to be plenty of receivers in this draft to where we could trade down and get maybe another third or fourth to help better our team to be great. So I'm all for Randall Gregory, Randy Gregory, or or and I'm all for if we get a pass rusher. Like if we get, do you man, think this is the end of our free agent moves? No, uh, no, I definitely possibly, don't. Possibly, but no, I agree with Huncho. Maybe not. It just depends on, you know, who's available, how much money they want to take in 
to come here and help contribute. And there's still some quality free agents out there, but depending on how much money they want. I mean, you got Justin Simmons at safety still out there, who I think is a very good safety. He's still out there and not signed with anybody. Clearly, he wants either the money or the team doesn't believe in him. So it's one or the other, you know, as far as that goes. But if it was me, I think we're somewhat done. But it wouldn't surprise me if we add another veteran player at safety, receiver, or even at guard or center. Because I still feel like you can never have enough depth at, you know, the, on the trenches, on the O-line or D-line. Yeah, uh, Huncho, you seem to agree with that uh, thought right there by JLo. Yes, I agree one hundred percent with what JLo just said. And do you think do you think that move would happen before the draft or after the draft? Is Juice is on the loose? He's about to join us in a minute here momentarily. We're going to bring in Kyle Machowski, Juice from On Tap Sports, and I'm very excited there. But Huncho, uh, when do you see that move happening? Maybe I say probably after the draft when we get things, you know what I'm saying, more acclimated, figured out. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of the draft, we got the man, the myth, the legend in right now, the great Juice, my man, my brother from another mother, Kyle Michalski, longtime friend of mine, longtime friend of the program, has been on plenty of times before. And now he's here to get his feet wet and – um I'm sure people know where he's going to go, but uh, nonetheless, you never know until the pick is in and it starts our month-long mock. I know you're a busy guy, Mr. Juice, nowadays with Cubs baseball starting, brother. Um, how the hell you been? How are you doing? And uh, kind of filling the people on on tap Sports Night and what you fellows are all up to. Doing great, Tones. Thanks for having me. Uh, on tap Sports Night, I'm one of the founding uh, fathers or originals. Over at ONTAP Sportsnet, head over there to ONTAPSportsnet.com for all your Chicago sports and literature needs. Guys, I was listening to your guys' show prior to coming on here. I'm just happy to hear that Greg Norman, the Shark, has has his own place within the Bucks defensive line. This uh, that was hilarious to me. Um, went just straight from live golf right to you know playing nose guard or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable, right? I guess, you know, Bucks did draft Bo Jackson, and he went to uh, baseball, so maybe we'll steal a golfer and put him in on the uh, Bucks line. You never know, but Juice, always good to see you, brother. Um, I know we got Cubs baseball. It's still on tonight, seemingly, so uh, we'll cross our fingers and hold our breath there. But before we get to our first pick and uh, our month-long mock with the great Juice, J-Lo, do you got any questions for our Bears brother in the house? And uh, if so, ask away. Who really would you pick at quarterback? Because I'm hearing Mitch Motion with Caleb Williams. And I'm hearing Jaden Daniels name Papa, Drake May, underdog. I mean, you as a Bears fan, you're going to want to hit on this pick. Okay, trade with Justin Fields. And now it's time to make this right pick. And you got two first-round picks in the first round, top 10. So really, this general manager, to me, he has to hit. If he does not hit, then he's out of a job at the next season. What do you tell? What do you say? Yeah, I'd like to preface that question with how amazing did that trade work out for them? Really, when you look at it, you ended up trading that number one pick to Carolina, ends up being the number one pick two years in a row, and you bring in a guy like DJ Moore who – you hope no matter what quarterback they pick is going to be somebody that that person can lean on. Uh, they go out and they get Keenan Allen. Mm. I've always sat and I've, I've talked about the quarterback position as this. I think it is nearly impossible to identify who is going to be good in the NFL compared to college because spread offenses and all these jumps, and it's a totally different game. You play college football and you have so much more time you get over into the NFL game and it's you got to make quick decisions and you almost got to make decisions at the line of scrimmage. And you know where that comes in? It comes into coaching. I'm going to sit here and tell you right now, the Chicago Bears are going to make a pick at number one and it's going to be a quarterback. The name matters, sure. But you know what matters more? How good Shane Waldron is. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's about creating a nest for whoever comes in here. 
and I have a name that I'm going to say in a second, but I think when you're looking at this, the Chicago Bears are the model for how to never develop a quarterback. They have consistently been in between GMs, in between head coaches when they do these quarterback drafts and, and pickups. And honestly, they're kind of in a way doing it again. Matt Eberflus is probably out on the streets if he doesn't make the playoffs next year. And the defense has been, you know, phenomenal. And he's done a great job with that unit, barring the fact that there isn't much of a pass rush. But there's a lot of great players on the back seven. You know, they do a really good job of finding a way to get pressure with more than four. But that's not what Matt Eberflus wants to do. I think it's interesting to sit and talk about these names because, and I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of digress. Jaden Daniels is a great talent. Mm-hmm. But you had that in Justin Fields. In a lot of ways, Justin Fields and, and Jaden Daniels are the same player. Um, I wouldn't say that it's going to cap Jaden Daniels' ability to win from the pocket. No, I don't know. I, I think that there's an, an opportunity there for him to grow into that. Drake May, great player. I think in any other draft, he's going number one. But if the Bears, and this is a PR thing because the Bears are that type of team, if they drafted Drake May, it would immediately be the second coming of Mitch Trubisky. Mm. Some of these people would think that way because that's just how dumb our fan base can be at times. You can't compare to me trading or comparing Drake May is to Mitch Trubisky is apples to oranges Mm -hmm. because there's much more of a tape on Drake May. But with that said, with the number one overall pick, in the 2024 NFL draft, the Chicago Bears will, and I'm being the one to break it right now, will be taking Caleb Williams at number one. Cue the music. Oh, Caleb Williams is the number one overall pick for the Chicago Bears. Surprise, surprise. And Juice, I have seen rumors circulating on Twitter. I guess not really rumors because Waddle and Sylvie seem to have uh, put it out there, and I trust those folks over at the fine mothership, the four-letter network. Um, you know, they said that Caleb Williams was in town last night meeting with Bears Brass, meeting with fellow Bears players. I'm not sure if on tap can confirm that as well. And a couple of good points you really make. Um, I know Bears fans would compare Drake May to Mitch Trubisky right off the bat because when the Bears drafted Justin Fields, a lot of those guys started comparing him to every other Ohio State quarterback under the sun that has had no success at the NFL level. I know Fields didn't have a great volume of success, but that's neither here or there nor in between. Uh, The kid was just drafted, and Bears fans were comparing him to the likes of, you know, JT Barrett, Cardell Jones, uh, all those types of guys, rest in peace, Dwayne Haskins, and um, those sorts of guys. But now you see C.J. Stroud bucking that trend. And, you know, Drake May and Trubisky are nowhere near the same type of talent, nor quarterback as well. So very good stuff there. And then I think, Juice, you bring up a lot of good stuff here as well. Um, I've been saying it myself. I kind of feel like the Bears are in flux and setting themselves up for the same position in terms of this whole conundrum with rookie quarterback who's going to be their head coach in the future because them and the Bucks set themselves up for the same cycle. They hire defensive minded head coaches, which could pan out greatly. I mean, nothing. I love Todd Bowles. He had a great year last year. Matt Eberfluss um, had that back seven, especially looking good with Brisker and Gordon and those cats playing their asses off. But at the end of the day, it's a vicious cycle because if you do good, Say if the Bears do good this year, as we lost Huncho, we'll see if we could get him back. But if the Bears do good and succeed this year, and their offense does really good, they're going to be at risk of losing Shane Waldron to a head coaching job elsewhere. And then guess what? You're going to have to hire another offensive coordinator. The Bucks just went through that this season. Or the Bears are going to be in a spot where they don't play well enough, and people are going to start to call on the promotion of Shane Waldron to the head coaching job. Machow. So to me, if I'm the Bears, it would have been a decent year to maybe reset the button on the head coaching position, in my opinion. I think that's uh, it's something that in Chicago, and we've talked about it a lot on Bears on Tap, that going into the end of the season, 
those are all things that we discussed heavily. It's if you're going to reset the quarterback timeline and the clock on the contract, you have to assure that somebody is going to be here to teach him for the next couple of years. And it scares the hell out of me to think that Shane Waldron may end up getting a job elsewhere as early as next year. The only thing I will say to that is the Bears, in terms of their staff at, you know, run game coordinator, passing coordinator, quarterbacks coach, have kind of built this nest for him already. Guys who are familiar with him. I, I know they had brought in the offensive passing coordinator from the Rams, the Sean McVay tree, mm-hmm. to go right next to Shane Waldron. And I'm blanking on his name right now, and I am so sorry for that. But they did bring him in, and he's called plays before, has done a good job of of teaching the quarterback position. Guys, they've done everything to Calebize this offense. <laughs> they brought in a guy who can – go up and get it and Keenan Allen win on the outside. They already had DJ Moore. I really like Jared Everett. I think him and Cole Komet running routes is something that's very possible and don't sleep on Swift either. The guy runs hard. He can get into the pass game, the screen game for so long. The bears have just not been able to run screens in their, (laughs) in their NFL franchise. Offensively, we've been bad at a lot of things, Running screens and picking quarterbacks are probably the two that you can sit as a Bears fan and say they can never do these things right. The The offensive line, they took some shots on a lot of names. There's a lot of names at that front offensive line that they're going to try to piece together because the fact of it is, is they just don't have a lot of picks in this draft. Mm-hmm. You know, They used one for Montez Sweat. They had to use another one for Keenan Allen. Next year, They're going to have a lot more flexibility, but other than one in nine, essentially there's not many cracks at, at at the, uh, at the pinata. And that's for Ryan Poles. That's a problem. It may mean that he has to deal out of nine. If there's a player that he doesn't like there, or if one of the quarterbacks sit there, Uh, it's a distinct possibility with the way that JJ McCarthy seems to be running up boards. Um, Yeah. The, the bears, I just think at the end of this whole thing, it comes down to what can you do for Caleb to make things easy? And he's so damn talented. Mm -hmm. But the problem with him, if there is a knock on him, he can make all the throws. He's athletic too. But he's one of those Aaron Rodgers types where he's not looking to run. He's, He's looking to buy more time in the pocket and hit a deep ball. The problem that he has is playing on time. And in the NFL, all of us know there are times you just need to be three steps, three step drop falls out. Mm -hmm. And the bears are going to have to figure out a way to get him into the the headspace of, we don't need 40 yard touchdowns. Each time you drop back, sometimes five yards is just fine on first and 10. And then we could really get into our stuff, but He can make every throw. If there were ever a quarterback that the Bears couldn't bears, it's Caleb Williams. But it's still, you sit in these in these moments and you think, I mean, I go back all the way to Cade McNown, my my first Bears memory at quarterback. And there's been a lot of expectations, all the way from now to Justin Fields, and Justin Fields now is in you know Pittsburgh. And I think that there's two things. Get him to play on time, and then you need to – we really need to figure out how to get him in and win that locker room back real quick because they love Justin Fields. Every player comes out and talks about Justin, says, yep, that's our guy, and now you traded him. So it's all about that head coach and Matt Eberflus going in there and reestablishing that culture of, hey, yeah, our leader's out the door, but we're bringing this guy in now too. He's pretty damn good too. And he wants to win, and let's uh, let's come together around him. Yeah, tall task, no doubt. Is a guy like Caleb Williams might think it's make or break for a guy like him for his head coach, right? If he has a good year, maybe Eberflus stays. If Williams is a bad year, you know he could get Frank Reich, like Carolina did with the the Bryce Young type of treatment. As we are joined by a couple for a couple more minutes here by the great Juice Kyle Michalski, our great friend from on tap sports net talking bears football he did select 
Caleb Williams with the first pick in our month-long mock. And I think you bring up a great point on the dropback factor. Look at the Bucks. Their O-line was viewed as terrible with Jameis Winston because one of his biggest negatives was he would drop back far too long, run around to the pocket, hold on to the ball too long, and eat a bunch of sacks. And that just wasn't an ideal situation. Bucks offense line got viewed as very bad from that. Not saying Caleb Williams will be anything like Brady, but Brady comes in, drops back, only takes three seconds to throw. Next thing you know, everyone's saying, oh, the Bucks have one of the best offense lines in football. Well, Brady did a great job of getting the ball out, taking the five to eight yard chunk plays. And I think that's a great uh, bring up on your end about how Caleb Williams could help better the offense quickly. I know he's a thing of the past, but our guy Richard here is a question saying, how did Bears fans feel about Fields? And I'm sure you guys over at On Tap had a lot of fans saying, what the hell's going on here? Because, I mean, a lot of them don't understand the business side of things. Not knocking them, but this was a business move. I, th- I think it's it's twofold. I think it's business, and I think it's also there needs to be a point where you can win from the pocket. And in today's NFL, you need to win from the pocket. We saw Lamar Jackson in that AFC championship game, a guy who consistently can't win from the pocket. And you can play like how Justin Fields and Lamar play, and you can get to the playoffs. But look at these guys who win Super Bowls, and I'm talking about multiple Super Bowls. Patrick Mahomes can win from the pocket. Tom Brady can win from the pocket. Drew Drew Brees can win from the pocket. You know, Mm -hmm. guys like Aaron Rodgers. We're, We're talking about the elites of the elite here. And it's just not sustainable. And it's also, it makes your offense, to me, it makes it hectic. You know, sometimes it's easy to just be boring, right? I know we, I know we like big chunk plays and we like running around in 30, 40 yard runs. <laughs> but that's only, that only happens very seldomly. And Justin Fields, while he was like Devin Hester-like at the quarterback position, when you needed him to win in the fourth quarter, he's awful. Mm -hmm. He had a very low QB rating in the fourth. He struggled. He threw a lot of untimely picks. And that's what happens. These good teams, when you play them, they keep you inside the tackles. And he just never got better as a passer. Sure, it's great. They're going to draft Caleb. It's going to reset the rookie contract. You know, they're going to be able to have a cheap asset who is probably close to the level of what Justin is right now. And I think at the end of the day, if you really truly look at where the fans lied, a lot of it was they were enamored at the potential of what Justin could be. Justin never became that. Mm -mm. And I love Justin Fields. I think I think Justin Fields has a really good opportunity to go play in Pittsburgh and win that locker room over really quick. And I also think that it's going to be really interesting. If I were one of those teams that could follow uh, Hard Knocks-wise, it'd be interesting to watch the relationship between Russ and Justin. Because Russ, as we know, certified weirdo. Justin (laughs) Fields, a leader amongst men. A guy who you really want to play for and with. And they have a really good defense and a really good head coach there. That's going to put him in position to succeed. So... Yeah, I, I think I wish Justin the best. I did. How did I feel about it? I, I think we're moving on to greener pastures, and that's just how I, you know, kind of when I view the, the Bears, that was my decision on fields. Yeah, I love him. I wish him the best, but it was time. It was just time to move on. And I think that's how a lot of Bears fans ultimately felt. At first, they didn't want to let him go. Then they felt just like you, Juice. Before I get to my last question for you, J-Lo, you have any last questions for the great Juice from ONTAP Sports? And I will say this, Fields passing never really improved. Um, I think that was a big red flag, right? I know he was a great runner. I know he made a lot of exciting plays. I know he worked hard. I know he busted his ass off. High character guy. But in this league, you got to improve passing. Look at what Josh Allen did. He improved passing year by year, and that's why he's on another level. He hasn't won yet, but he's still special enough in this league to make Bills fans 
feel great. F- uh, field, no pun intended, never took that next step in passing. And it's interesting because now you have back-to-back off seasons, which to me the Bears have won last year pulling off that heist for the Panthers. Um, you know, that's incredible maneuver by Ryan Pace. They got Montez Sweat at the trade deadline. That was a huge move. He's a hell of a pass rusher. And now this offseason, they're getting veterans like Keenan Allen, um, you know, DeAndre Swift, the O-lineman from the Bills, who they almost got twice now a couple of years yep, back. Ryan they Bates. Fight. Yeah. Yep, Ryan Bates. That's a huge move. So, uh, J-Lo, as I pass the torch to you, kudos to the Bears juice. I think they're having a really good offseason. We'll see if it translates. But, J-Lo, the floor is yours. Any last questions before I get to mine? Well, with the first pick taking, obviously, Kale Williams, which we all expect to happen because, I mean, to me, he probably is the best quarterback in the draft, even though he has some, you know, some issues that some fans are at outside the Bears. But with the ninth pick, what would you – expect them to pick where they go on linemen to help protect Caleb Williams or would they go with another pass rusher and a little bit of a spoiler he will be back for the ninth pick down the road but you know that's neither here nor there but my, go on my, but, but my bad <laughs> I assume but um anyway but I'm saying that for the ninth pick you don't have to give me a name but like what would you want for the Bears to go with the ninth pick would you want to go with alignment to protect Caleb Williams? Do you want to go with another another target receiver? Because I know there will be a couple of receivers available, at least on my opinion. I would say Brock Bowers, but since you got Gerald Everett, now he's kind of out, you know, out of the case. Or would you trade down to get more draft picks? Like you mentioned, you know, there don't have too many draft picks. So you trade down with a team that wants a quarterback or receiver or tight end. Because this draft is really cropped right now with wide receivers, ed well not too much edge rushers, but you know, but wide receivers loaded on receivers though. Loaded, loaded on receivers that can easy to me I feel I can go maybe eight to ten in the first round just to get a little cocky out of that. But but I think the guy from Washington, I don't want to say his name because I might butcher it. He, might be he actually by- met with the Bears today. Machau, is that where you'd lean the wide receiver, you think, or would you go elsewhere? So at the end of the day, what I think is interesting is what the Bears have done this offseason allows them to be flexible at nine, mm. them bringing in a Keenan Allen. Like if if they could not get the Keenan Allen trade done, you, you would definitely write in that they're picking neighbors, Roma Dunze, um, I, the other LSU wide receiver who's flying up the board too is uh, I forget his name too Brian Malik, Thompson, but, or yeah. Brian Thompson Jr. Yep, yes. that's right. Um, I mean, and you can look too. I mean, they traded for you know Montez Sweat. They were thirty first in the league in pressures, and that's with Montez Sweat for a lot of the year. So he needs a running mate. He does. Um, I think that they've done some really nice things with the interior offensive line or defensive line. I like Zach Pickens a lot. I think he's a, a guy who could bust up the middle. Um, Jervon Dexter played really, really well this, this season. He's a really good player. Yeah. <laughs> the game. He's a really good player. I liked him last year. We talked a lot about him on Bears on Tap. And when they finally did get him, man, that, that was that was one hell of a get. Um they're, they could they have the flexibility if they really wanted to to reset the contract market at two premier positions quarterback and left tackle if one of those left tackles are there don't be surprised if they they think about that but ultimately I think a lot of Bears fans not particularly me because I do want to see how this board plays out for everybody because I will be back to pick nine. We could easily trade back and get some picks. The problem with trading back is if you're Ryan Poles, you don't want to trade too far back because this draft is very, very top heavy. First, second, third rounds of this draft, elite. But there is a distinct fall off come the fourth and fifth rounds. You can find a guy in those rounds, but you're good luck. Six and seven are, and that's just what's going on today with NIL. I mean, that's all sports. Guys don't want to come out early if they're not going to be an early-round pick. 
So they wait, they wait, they wait. They try to improve their draft stock and they'll play all the way through four years. If it means that, you know, they're not going in those top you know, three rounds. So I love the flexibility they have with nine, but I think, and I've said this for a really long time, the more playmakers you can get around a guy like Caleb Williams, who is new coming into the league, the better. So I've always leaned going wide receiver or picking up that left tackle because I think Matt Eberflus is a good enough of a defensive mind to kind of disguise some of the problems they have up front on the defensive line. And they're going to have, I think they have seven or eight picks in the next year's draft to address if they truly need that, you know, pass rusher on the outside. And if you're looking at nine, you're looking at two names, you're looking at Turner or verse Mm -hmm. and they just, they show spurts on their tape, but it's not consistent enough to be like, I need that guy at nine. So it's interesting. I think the, the flexibility that they have allows them to do a lot of things at nine. And that's why, It'll be really interesting to see how your guys' draft plays out because I may come back and have totally different things to say at nine opposed to, you know, right now as I sit here with just Caleb Williams on my roster. And that's a great point from the great juice. Once again, we're here with the great juice of ONTAP Sportsnet, and we'll leave you with this juice. Last question from us and as we let you go warm up in the bullpen for the Cubs game, <laughs> Cubs Rockies coming up, and we'll obviously have you back here in a week or two depending on – how it all falls and get your timing and availability. And, um, you know, Bucks are in a similar spot as the Bears in terms of I think they could pick just about anybody right now. You know, the Bucks set themselves up at pick 26 to trade back like the Bears can at pick nine or maybe take an edge, maybe take a receiver interior offensive line. They can do a lot of things, and they just brought in Randy Gregory to help bolster that defensive line as well. Kind of your thoughts quickly, Juice, on uh, the state of the NFC South. And do you think the Bucs have a chance to win the division? A lot of people are writing the Falcons in as the proclaimed division winners. Do you agree with that alignment? As a distinct K, or, uh, um, what's his, Kirk Cousins watcher over the years, uh, his long tenure with the Minnesota Vikings, that man will give you a game if you allow him to give you a game. Um, I like him. I think he's good. I don't think he's great. And I don't know, football for me, I've always had this mentality. Elite quarterbacks win Super Bowls. The bottom tier, 10, 11, 12, we're talking not bottom tier, but upper bottom tier, you have to have a lot go right to win your divisions, to make deep runs in the playoffs. And that South Division, man, it's always been bruised. It's a bruising division. It's it feels like it always comes down to a game here and there between, you know, Bucks, Saints, Bucks, Falcons. And I like what you saw out of Baker Mayfield last year. I really did. I thought out of all the years of taking that jump that we've waited for him to take, he took it this year. There were a lot of different you know things you saw in his game that I don't think you would have seen, you know, two, three, four years ago. Within, within his progressions, within his understanding of the game. I will say this. I would, I would imagine the Falcons, for most betters, are going to be the favorite. Mm-hmm. But it would not surprise me at all if the Bucks are the ones who win that division. I don't believe much in the Saints and what they're doing over there. They're kind of in cap hell. And as mm-hmm. you know, Carolina is still Carolina. And they're going to be a problem for a while. So, yeah. So I think it'll come down to divisional games. And it's strictly going to come down to does Kirk Cousins give you a game on the road when you're when he's at home in Atlanta and you guys are in a, a one score ball game? Does he throw you the football or not? Because I think your teams are very even. And I'll tell you what, I've watched a lot of Kirk Cousins. He will give you the football pressure up the middle and in his face. He will give you the football. And he had Jay Jettis for a really long time. And I like what they have over there. I don't love it. So it would not surprise me to see the Bucs win that division. 
Seems like it's going to be a battle in the NFC South along with the NFC North. I like what the Bears and Packers are doing. I think Vikings constructed a couple of good moves, but they're probably on the bottom tier now for me. They're probably the fourth team. And then obviously Detroit is front and center. But Juice, it's been so great having you, brother. Always a great time catching up. I wish we could do it more often, both on the pod and in person. We're going to have to catch a couple rounds of golf this summer. We're going to have to hang out, maybe catch a baseball game or something. But surely between the pod and uh, golf, I don't plan on this being the first or last time of us meeting this summer, my friend. Anytime you guys need me on here, I will definitely come on and visit with you guys a little bit. Um, Just real quick, plug a few things. Uh, I am one of the co-hosts for Bears on Tap. If you're interested in a little bit more draft coverage, and that's everybody, we're talking about every single team within the NFL, uh, in-depth breakdowns of position players, we have our big draft board going on right now. Not not currently, I don't think they're on the mic today, but uh, Q and the boys are putting together amazing content. Um, And on draft night, I know you guys will be doing, I think you said the third day? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, On the first night, they do a full um, live pod, go into depth with each pick, talk about what it means for each team. Bears on tap. I do not participate because, as you mentioned, Tones, I do 162 Cubs games on this mic. I will probably be doing one tonight as well, as long as the snow holds out. But um, thank you guys for having me. Go ahead and go over to Bears on Tap if you're interested in any draft coverage. We're just trying to grab a little bit more from the outside of the NFL um, at ontapsportsnet.com for all your Chicago sports and literature needs. I can't thank you guys enough for having me on here, man. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, Juice, and I know you guys are friends with J.C. Allen from uh, Bucks Game Day, SI Game Day as well. He appeared on your guys' Bears on tap, so we'll link Bears on tap, Cubs on tap. We'll link all the on taps uh, when we put this out on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google, and so much more. But always a pleasure, Juice. You were awesome tonight, brother. Uh, Look forward to chatting to you in a week or two, and uh, we're going to continue to dive in because we got a new co-host, Gene, from Buck What You Heard. He has a great Bucks podcast. He joined the Bucketeers. He loves watching other podcasts, so um, he's mentioned you guys before. We all look forward to continue following you guys and uh we'll talk soon juice it was awesome appreciate it hope uh all the best for greg norman in the trenches this season <laughs> richard loved it as well so uh we appreciate you juice uh stay safe brother and uh, i'll see you on uh cubs on tap tonight for my television <sighs> yeah let's uh let's hope for a sweep uh, i'll tell you what guys who i know who are already there it's cold out there but i'll see you boys <laughs> see you juice you were great man and uh that was a lot of fun j-lo huncho i know you were in and out but j-lo that was good stuff from a good guy they're very knowledgeable sports brain between football baseball used to play basketball so um really good friend of mine and uh he he has a good time he has a lot of fun and uh no shock with the caleb williams pick it'll be a little more shock and i'm sure who goes number nine when that's available when juice joins us in a week or two yeah, I'm sorry about that, my uh, phone, and I had other stuff going on. But, yeah, I was listening in, and I agreed 100% with a lot what uh, Juice was saying. And um, especially when you're getting a, a young quarterback coming in in the draft, you don't know what you're getting. I mean, it was one one uh, number one overall pick, I believe, that went to the Super Bowl since uh, they started, and that was the offensive tackle for the Chiefs, I believe. But uh, as you see, at the same time, when you have uh, Stroud coming out last year and them making it so deep in the playoffs, uh, anything can happen. But as he was saying, it, it, it does rely on a lot of the coaching. And you have DeMarco Ryans over there. He's a hell of a coach. You get what I'm saying? So you got to have great uh, coaches around these players that's going to um, – just groom them and um ha- help them transition into the NFL and get them up to speed. And um, I, I-, I want to see more of this happening with the quarterbacks coming out of college and getting into the league. But you know, once you when you once you're drafted, you're drafted into a pretty bad situation. That's why you're the number one pick. So uh, it's difficult, but as we've seen, it can be done when you're you're put in the right place. Yeah, Huncho, I think you said it very well there. I think you put your word or my words into your words. I think I would say the same. J-Lo, 
uh, based on what Huncho said and just having juice in general. It's, oh, Christopher Cole seems to be a Cubs guy. Always good to have a fellow Cubs guy. Um, Louis Montavo, shout out to him. He's joining us on Facebook, watching us on Facebook as well. But J-Lo, thoughts on what Huncho said and uh, having juice on. Um, I know you've been on the show for about a year now. We've had a lot of fun guests. So, um, you know, he's up there with the best of them. No, it's always good to have another fan of a different team come in here, give me their perspective. And I learned a lot from them. I, I learned a lot from him today on what the expectations are as Bears fans, as far as that goes. And, you know, it's going to be a fun time, you know, as far as the draft keeps going and who we bring on as far as other opposing fans making their pits. Mm-hmm. But obviously, Caleb's going to go number one. I mean, I think we all know that by now. It would be a shocker if they did take another player. But that's what's about the draft. You never know what could happen. You know, you expect that this one player is going to go number one, and next thing you know, poof. So their player goes before him, and they wonder what what happened. Like, thank God Stroud did not go to Carolina. Thank God. we don't Even Richardson, bro. Even Richardson, bro. Richardson, if, I mean. If Richardson if, or Stroud were in Carolina, uh, I'd be I'd a little be, more pissed yeah. off. Well, I'd me, be scared me. this year, but I wouldn't be. I, like, I get that, but just looking at Carolina last year and how bad of a team they were with the coaching again, I, I don't know if Rick, uh, if I'm talking about Rick, I mean, Stroud, CJ Stroud would have got the right development to even, you know what I'm saying, have that type of rookie uh start you get what i'm saying so and that's what juice alluded to as well huncho you make a great point there and that's why juice is kind of afraid of how the bears qb pick goes because he said hey the bears could pick caleb williams they could pick drake may they could pick Jaden daniels although he picked caleb williams a lot of people haven't picked caleb williams but he made a great point in saying it's more so the development of the quarterback. Exactly. And he made a great point in saying, hey, they strengthened their staff. They sure as hell did because they got Sean, uh, Shane Waldron, and then they got Thomas Brown, he was alluding to, their yeah. new passing game coordinator who has offensive coordinator experience, Rams experience with McVay. So, Huncho, that's a great point, and that's a great point that Juice made as well. Right. Um, real quick here, I do want to – Give well wishes. Again, we seem to have to do this too much, and it's very sad for the football world and the wrestling world. But Steve Mongo McMichael taken back to the hospital yet again. Um, You know, he's a Hall of Famer on the Bears. He just is going to get inducted this year, which is awesome. And he's a WWE Hall of Famer as well. I remember when Pops and I, my old man, met him years and years back at a Bucks Bears pregame show in Chicago. Just a really nice guy. Great guy. Since we're talking about the Bears, I just want to give well wishes to Mongo McMichael as he's rushed back to the hospital. Um, Sad stuff there, fellas. Speaking of which, RIP Vontae Davis. Very unfortunate what happened to him and how he was found at home. You know, I know I respect for um, Joe for Cleveland me. I know he's a Colts fan. You know, very disturbing news. You know, life is so short. You never know what could happen. And, you know, you know, bl- God bless the family that are affected by it as far as his brother, Vernon Davis, who played in the NFL as well. So I repeat him as well. I want RP, I want to throw at him because Yep, Vontae Davis, ex Cole, ex U of I, ex Dolphin, ex Bill. I mean, it's sad, man. I mean, you know, life is so short. That's why you gotta take every day, you know, one day at a time and enjoy life as possible because you know never know when your time is up. You know, that's why I throw that out there as well. That's why I enjoy things like the UFL. That's why I enjoy every little freaking thing I can because you just never know. And you got to be appreciative. And J-Lo, I think you hit the nail on the head with that entire sentiment there. I think we just got to enjoy these things. Um, You know, that's why you enjoy the players when they're playing. Because I know, you know, it's a different thing. But when they retire, they're gone. And it's just never the same. And then when they actually pass on later in life, it's just the most tragic thing. So we got to enjoy every little thing we can in life and uh, never really 
take it for granted, fellas. And speaking of taking it for granted, sometimes I know we all take this pod for granted, and it's just a blessing being able to talk football and all things sports with you guys. And we'll be back here Saturday morning talking all things sports as well for our month-long Bucketeers mock draft fellas. I know it was only pick one, but kind of the test trial run. How do you think it went, J-Lo? It went well. I mean, it's a good start. I said, well, it's a great start. I think we'll be able to get this in the bag as far as the next few months we get in there with the other teams. I like what the gentleman brought into the pod tonight on the Bears pick. And I can't wait to see his next pick and the, the next pick. That's going to be my real question about pick because we all know Kellen's going to go number one. The real question is what the Bears are going to do with the next pick. Because after that pick, they're not going to pick a while to what, the third round? So it'll be interesting to see, you know, when he brings the, you know, the next pick and the next pod. Yeah, and they've been doing a good job of getting the most for their mid-round picks with veterans like Amante Sweat. Keenan Allen. Huncho, what you think of the beginning of the month-long mock with Mr. Juice from on tap? I think it was a fun time. I definitely enjoyed it, and I love when we have special guests and we get other opinions and, um, you know, just a different view, and we get a little insight of what's going on around the NFL with other teams, and it's uh, very knowledgeable, and every guy that you bring on here and, and, and on the on the uh, the host, all the great guys, and they give you great insight on things that you might not, you know, what I'm saying, view view or see a certain way. So I, I mean, I appreciate everybody that you bring on, and um, even though you might not see me, I'm always listening. Yeah, and I appreciate that, and that's why we don't have guests all the time because I love just talking with the bucketeers. But when we do have guests, we try and make it the best of them, guys who will, guys and gals who will bring the boom, bring the smack, late down the hardware as we're nearing a night of sports. So we got basketball, we got hockey, we got wrestling, we got baseball. We got a lot of beautiful things on tonight, gentlemen, as we hone in here on our final word. And we will be back Saturday with a couple more picks for our month-long mock as well. If you're joining late, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube, turn the notification bell on honestly that means the world to us when you subscribe turn the notification bell on hit that like button it's been phenomenal tonight not done yet but we are nearing the end JLo, any final word for the program as we wrap up another beautiful great bucketeers and now ian rapaport's confirming that caleb williams met with the bears as well and now it's rumored that roma dunze the washington receiver might be Next, I mean yeah. the Bears. If the Bears can nail Kel Williams and Dunze, that's a home run. Huncho, yeah, I'm saying yeah that that is a home run. Uh, and I've seen a, a lot of the talk. I, I think they're pretty bolstered at the right receiver position. If I personally was the Bears, I mean, I'm not sure what what their defensive side is looking at, but I don't know. I would try to put some some of that the high rounds and on that side of the ball. You want to get your impactful leader on the defensive side also. J-Lo, continue uh, your thoughts. I agree with you, Hunch. No, like I said, I mean, the Bears can know those two pits. I mean, that's a home run hit to me. For the most part, you you get your – Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we got you. I just want to make sure – but as far as that goes, I mean, it's going to be a fun that's cool, next few pods, you know, nailing the mock draft and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to it as far as that goes. And um, like I said, I mean, it's a fun month of sports. You got the Final Four. You got hockey playoffs coming up. I can't wait because obviously when I come to Chicago, I'm going to be rocking my lightning gear. Hopefully, too many Blackhawks fans don't get too upset with me when I rock up in Chicago. I can't. Blackhawks are a little on the back burner right now. They're on the back burner, but you know they they beat them back in the 14th season. As far yes, as, they you did. Know, they, they kicked did. their ass. So, so I can't really you know say anything mean about them. You know they won a, they won a couple, what two or three Stanley Cups. But anyway, point being is it's a fun time in sports. 
enjoy it folks and all the followers and people watching tonight thank you and keep supporting us and we love our buccaneers go bucks and we do have more breaking news on mongo mcmichael he gets to return home tonight thankfully allegedly according to Jarrett payton walter payton's kid he says steve mcmichael has a uti and will be returning home tonight those are messages passed on from his family so good stuff there fellas again beautiful day of the bucketeers we went over new jersey numbers uh you know we read jersey numbers on all the newcomers if you guys missed it and want to catch a replay we had juice on from on tap sports net to make our first overall month mock draft pick for the bears caleb williams chatted with him we talked UFL and a whole bunch of other things, few and far in between as well. Any last words, fellas, before we get out of here? Is Ed Rabasa, better late than never, joining us on Facebook. We do appreciate it. But Hunch, j it was a fun Wednesday. Any last um, rebuttals? Go Bolts, baby. A one nothing over the Maple Leaf. Let's Fuck them. Go. Fuck Toronto. <laughs> Let's go, Toronto. Tampa. And plus, it's WrestleMania way, baby. So any wrestling fans out there listening, let's fucking go, baby. WrestleMania week, three-night extravaganza, I call it. And speaking of extravaganza, we'll be um, probably releasing another Cleave and Me at some point this week. But if you missed it, J-Lo and myself were on the latest Cleave and Me talking about WrestleMania. Huncho says... Let's go. Christopher Cole says Cubs delayed until 8 Eastern. Well, I still got 17 minutes. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I got to let these gentlemen go before I need to start paying them overtime. But J-Lo, Huncho, always great with you guys. And always remember, 3-2-1, touchdown, Tampa Bay. k and over the goalpost, through the end zone, soaring through the air. Bucks win, advance to the Super Bowl. Tones Decker off. I'm just messing around, fellas. But always a great time, gentlemen. Until next time, I'll see you guys on the Lido. And uh, we'll be talking soon, I'm sure, in the text chat, fellas. You guys have a great night, each of you. Let's go. You too, Honcho. Go Bucks. All right, brother. On behalf of Honcho, J-Lo, Juice from ONTAP Sports, our special guest, which is incredible. We'll link him in the description. And on behalf of all of the knuckleheads who couldn't quite make it tonight, Bucko, A-Cat, uh, Stunna, and the great Gene from Buck What You Heard. It's been another beautiful bucket of tears as we're zeroing in on episode 200. You guys have a great night. Richard, good night. Christopher, good night. Everybody else who joined, good night. God bless. We appreciate all of you. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Fire the damn cannons. Enjoy your guys' Wednesday night. Hump day. Be safe. Be sound. Be happy. I know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. Like, energy, electricity. That place was rocking anyone was there. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Bug fans were there, too. Uh, Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron Show. Of WDAE, uh, Pat Donovan. Pat Donovan. And it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Gonna put him on mute for a second until that gets a little clear. But we're joined by it Pat Donovan. It looks like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something over there. <laughs> it does look like we got a little. No, my my uh, camera's broke. <laughs> <laughs>